Gibraltar, spies, parachuting in, paintballs, hedgehogs, macaques, a chase, a yacht, and a new James Bond. All in the pre-title sequence to the living daylights. Hi, this is Dan Silvestri. Tom Pizzotto. I'm Vicky Hodges. Of SpyMovieNavigator.com and our show, Cracking the Code of Spy Movies. Let's dive in to the pre-title sequence of The Living Daylights. All right. I like how you did that. Dive in the parachuters. That's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. There you go. After the gun barrel sequence, now with Timothy Dalton as James Bond, the gun barrel opens up onto a fortified beach with a plane in the background. I say fortified because we see about nine or ten Czech hedgehogs, sometimes just called hedgehogs, on the sand. Those are the anti-tank obstacles that are made of metal angled beams or I-beams. And it's used to stop tanks from disembarking from a floating carrier and getting onto the beach during wartime. So, Well, now we, we'll see these hedgehogs again on the North Korea beach in the pre-title sequence to die another day. Yeah, yeah, and I visited that beach. That's one of the locations I've been to, Holywell Bay in oh. Wales in the UK. It's a lovely location. Nice. Actually, did you know that the Living Daylight's title is the last Fleming title used until 2006 Casino Royale? Ah, yeah, you know, it's good, good catch there. And it has, the title has nothing to do, of course, with, with the actual book you know, or mm. short story. But I love the title, and it comes out later why it was called The Living Daylights and so on. But it's kind of cool. So that's kind of neat. All right, and then Casino Royale, of course, the very first Bond novel written in 1953 was the last one they got rights to at Ian Productions. So that's why it didn't come out till 2006. All right. and it was And it was the best Curvis and Wade movie done because they it, based it, was, it off the damn book. Yeah, it was very close to the book. All right, so here in the Living Daylights, we see a couple of large mounted guns on wheels, barbed wire, bunkers, and a radar unit. There's a mountainous region in the back left and some buildings and that plane. And waves are washing the beach. Kind of a ominous kind of view we get here. Yeah. Mm, okay, so where are we yeah. and what war is this? This <laughs> this is one brilliant opening shot, 45 seconds into this, and we're already wondering what's going on. Yeah, I love that. All right, and they did that great. And as the camera pans up and to the left, it frames the entire mountain, and we see, if we know anything about geography at all, and we don't much in the U.S., but <laughs> it's Gibraltar. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know our rock structures. <laughs> All right. Now we know where we are. So there you go, Vicky. But wait, a war in Gibraltar? Nah. And by the way, this pre-title was actually filmed in Gibraltar. So this is kind of mm -hmm. cool. All right. Immediately, we switch to M, giving a pep talk to some of his double O's. Gentlemen, this may only be an exercise so far as the Ministry of Defense is concerned. But for me... It is a matter of pride that the double O section has been chosen for this test. Your objective is to penetrate the radar installations of Gibraltar. Now the SAS have been placed on full alert to intercept you, but I know you won't let me down. Good luck, man. Yes. yes. Wow. <laughs> and notice there is an assistant who is fastening a tether to M. <laughs> yeah. What's going on here? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Strapping them or something. Yeah. We don't know what the heck that is, a tether. So M is pleased his 00 section has been chosen. They need to penetrate the radar installation of Gibraltar. Of course, there will be defenders on Gibraltar to stop them as the SAS has been placed on full alert to stop them. So this is what he's telling his guys. So it's some kind of field exercise. His 00s have been chosen to go do this and knock out the radar installations. All right. So, it's an intriguing pre-title sequence already. We have not seen anything like this before in a Bond movie, have we? Yeah. This is kind of cool. I, I, can't, I can't think of another testing exercise that they used no. in the whole series, but yeah. for this yeah. one here. No, and now it becomes clear that they're all aboard a plane, and the three double O's are about to parachute out. Oh, I love M's office here. Wood walls, big desk, trophies on the cabinet, all very M-like. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, yeah I, 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 was, <laughs> I was wondering that myself. I was like, uh, wow, all, all of these accoutrements that are in... Oh, there's a good word, Dan. Accoutrements? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, accoutrements, yeah. In M's mobile office here, I thought, wow, 
they went all out with the trophies on the cabinet. I, I mean, one one looks like an Oscar or something. Uh, <laughs> one's a horse. One's a cannon. And I guess these things were very important to him that he had them mm-hmm. transported onto a plane for this mission <laughs> over Gibraltar. It's like, wow, you got to be pretty fussy, Em. I mean, <laughs> uh, all right, remembering remembering that Em got tethered, like Vicky just pointed out. Yeah, you don't want to lose him here. <laughs> he's not parachuting out, so they got well, him tethered. So that now we yeah, know why he's tethered. He's aboard this plane. So he's aboard the plane when the the door goes up. Yeah, yeah. His, his papers from his desk start blowing around. Yeah, I mean, it, it was. A, I thought it was a nice humorous touch. It was a bit dumb, but it, I thought it worked well here. Yeah, I thought it was dumb too. But and, and I love his response. He's, he he says, "No blast." <laughs> but damn. <laughs> So we, we've got this part. We're into this thing. I don't remember how far we're into this thing, but what about James Bond? Yeah, and this is a James Bond movie. Maybe. We've got M talking to his troops, mm. and we know there's a new Bond in this yeah. movie. We haven't seen anything yet, have we? Because Moore finished his last outing yeah. as Bond in A View to a Kill. Yeah. So yeah. are one of these three guys he's talking to the new Bond? Yeah. Hey, we yeah. haven't seen that yet, right? We haven't seen their faces, I don't think, and. Maybe uh, Bond's not on this mission. <laughs> it's just a pre-title <laughs> without Bond, which wouldn't be the first where Bond doesn't appear in a pre-title sequence. No, he did not really appear in From Russia with Love. That was someone playing Bond as being pursued by Grant. There you go. So maybe not. Maybe he's not here. <laughs> we know we have a new Bond, but we don't know who it is. We see the double O's jump out of the plane, but we have seen no faces yet. No, no. Ah, Tom, the slow reveal that you like? <laughs> no, I love a slow reveal of Bond. I love uh, it. There you go, yeah, Tom. Uh, this yeah, is a slow I'm, one. <laughs> yeah, I'm with Tom here. I love a slow reveal too. And they did a similar thing in Goldeneye 1995 on Pierce Brosnan's first outing as Bond. There was a slow reveal of him. Yeah, uh, I love that. Yeah, and so the slow reveal for Sean Connery with the way they shot him with the lighter at the Baccarat table in Dr. No. Slow reveal for George Lazenby in the car chase when he's chasing mm-hmm. Tracy's car and on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Roger doesn't really get a slow reveal in Live and Let Die as you see his face in bed with Miss Caruso when M knocks on his door. We didn't exactly know it was Bond at the time, but it didn't take long. And we get the slow reveal here with Timothy. And then, like everything with Daniel, they don't follow formula with him, and we don't get a slow reveal in Casino Royale. <laughs> mm-hmm. So there. <yeah. laughs> okay, so let's get off this reveal thing, even though I really like it, <laughs> and let's get back to the plane that they jump out. Okay. Right. So this plane is a Hercules C-130, originally built by Lockheed, mm-hmm. and which is an American company. And these planes had tremendous capabilities, including the LAPES, which are low-altitude parachute extraction system. Yes. So what happens here is a parachute is used to pull out the cargo like a tank out the rear door while the plane makes a touch-and-go. We'll see this plane later in the movie with a fight between Bond and Necros. Yeah. I'm not sure about that, if it's the same plane. I think it is. But the year that the Living Daylights came out, there was a Hercules C-130 crash during a demonstration of the very technique you're talking about here, the low-altitude parachute extraction system, and it actually killed three people. So, I mean, this was real stuff, real plane that actually did this kind of stuff. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so the three double O's dive out of the plane, and then we see a radar installation apparently at the top of Gibraltar. You could kind of see that in the pan shot from the beach when they first showed the full shot of yes. Gibraltar. Yes. One of the best shots in the pre-title sequence is what we see now, a shot from above the parachutist, shoots yeah. now still unopened, free-falling towards the wedge of mountainous land below. I love that. This really brings us, the viewers, into the free-fall. It's a brilliant shot. And the double O's are all dressed in black. Yep. Keep an eye out for some great camera angles and locations that really dramatize what is unfolding. It's a great, great sequence. Yeah, that's That's one of my favorite shots. Oh, it absolutely is. And so let's give some credit here. The cinematographer for this movie was Alec Mills. Uh But I haven't found out who shot this sequence for sure. Given his reputation, I believe Tom Sanders was the guy. He's credited with as an additional camera operator on this and three other Bond movies, and he made his reputation in shooting aerial sequences. Mm. So that's why I believe it's probably him. Okay. Now, yeah. for the skydivers, 
this gets really interesting and a bit confusing because BJ Worth, who did the Eiffel Tower jump in A View to a Kill, yeah. was the aerial stunts arranger. And he and Jake Lombard did the aerial stunts later in the movie with the bags of heroin hanging off the back of the plane. Yes, yes, that's great. On, on the extra feature that comes on my DVD set called Inside the Living Daylights, they're a little confusing here because they say B.J. Worth and Jay Glombard contribute to the pre-credits parachute jump, mm. but they don't say they were two of the three who made the jump. Yeah. Jack Brake, Gary Carter, and Dan O'Brien are credited as aerial stunts for the movie. Okay. So it's okay. possible B.J. and Jake coordinated the jump yeah. And Gary, right. Jake, and Dan did the actual jump. Yeah. The extra is a little confusing to me as to which one it's going to be, because I'd love to give credit to these guys because it's it's done really, really well. Mm -hmm. But so far, I haven't been able to find the definitive answer, and I've spent a lot of time trying to figure that out. It is done really well, and it is one of the best shots in the whole pre-title sequence when they're free-falling towards Gibraltar. Beautiful. So we see the shoots open, and now we have to be wondering... How are you going to surprise anyone on Gibraltar <laughs> when you have three shoots falling slowly <laughs> to the ground? <laughs> they have invisibility cloaks, Dan. <laughs> uh, well, won't they be yeah. kind of visible? I mean, big shoots and directional shoots where you could guide them to a particular spot you want to land. So maybe the idea is, sure, you can see us, but we are landing somewhere where we know there aren't any defenders, and you will still have to find us after we land. Okay. All right, maybe that's it. But someone on the ground with binoculars is watching. Hmm, now we're wondering. It's kind of like the guy with the binoculars reading the newspaper, watching the yeah. funeral of Bond in You Only Live Twice in the Hong Kong Harbor. Yeah, so he's the guy's got the binoculars, he's watching, and we see two of the parachuters land successfully, and the third has a shoot caught up in a low tree, but his feet are still only a few feet from the ground. So, and how many uh, times do you see that trope, right, yeah. where the parachuters yeah. come down, somebody gets stuck in a tree? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, it could happen, for crying out loud. Come on, give him a break. <laughs> he releases the shoot, though, and he's about to move when a defender appears behind him and fires. Bam! Dead. Well, he gets splattered with a paintball on his back then turns around in disappointment and gets hit in the chest with another round of paintballs. Okay, now we understand, as the defender says, That's it, chum. You're out of it. Okay, the weaponry here will be paintballs, so they won't die. Hmm. But it will be obvious that they've been hit and they're out, right? You got to hit with a paintball. We do not recognize this double O's face. He has a Roger Moore kind of frame to him, though, which I thought was kind of odd. It's a little weird. But yeah, but I, I really like how they did this exercise with the paintball thing, yeah, right? Yeah. Because it's it should be non-lethal except yeah. the, the guy. Yeah, unless they use real ammunition. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it should be non-lethal. So paintballs, it's a good way to do this type of training. Although, why didn't they shoot at the guy parachuting down? It, we, I think that'd be a fairly easy target. I mean, yeah, but yeah. here, everybody can see the paintball splatter on you. They know you can't continue playing. You know they know that they can, you can't continue playing. So I think this works really well for me. Yeah, like the mm. first guy who got shot. I mean, he, you know, the guy who shot him couldn't be too far, right? He, the guy just landed and he shot him. So right. why, why, like you said, Tom, why not shoot him when he's in the air? Okay, you're out you're, before you even <laughs> landed. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we know one of the three double O's is out already. Yeah. So this can't be Bond. Not a great start as this double O hadn't even moved three feet yet. Yeah, literally. <laughs> as the scene switches, we see what we think is a double O way down below yeah. and another double O much further up the Shia Rock formation. It's another great camera angle here yes. as we see from above what is happening from below. And then it pans up, almost like we are climbing the cliff yeah. as it reveals more as we see the face of the double O much further up. But we still do not recognize him. Not Bond either. Is Bond even on this mission? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so this double O further up throws a grappling hook that can catch a rock. It's a nice sound effect here. Metal yeah. clink against rock and dragging to catch. So now he can ascend to what we presume to be the peak where the radar installation is, which is great. Yep. But wait. As we see the grappling hook firmly in place, we see the shadow of a head and body uh -oh. cover the rock formation next to it. Uh-oh. Is the dub second double O about to get hit with a paintball? 
Oh no! <laughs> M can't be too thrilled so far. Yeah. <laughs> if he's got some, city. <laughs> some, if he's getting the uh, messages from the ground. All right. So this second double O is climbing up this steep cliff, reminding us, of course, of Roger Moore as Bond climbing up Meteora in Greece in mm. for your eyes only. And now, was this also the inspiration 13 years later for Tom Cruise's Ethan Hunt character climbing up Uh at Dead Horse Point State Park in Utah in Mission Impossible 2? Looks very much like it. It definitely does. Okay, so let's go on. The shadow reveals himself. He's dressed in all in black, just like the double O's were. Yeah, there you go. That's a clue, maybe. Is this the third double O? It must be. Because we haven't seen his the double that third double O's face yet. Yeah. As this figure peers down at the double O climbing up the cliff, another defender appears behind him and splat. He hits our shadowy figure with a paintball and says, Game's up, mate. You're dead. Damn. Well, not quite. <laughs> the shadowy figure turns with the real pistol with a silencer attached and fires at the defender, hitting him in the chest but not with a paintball. Uh-oh. It, it looks like mm. he hit him with live ammunition and the defender falls. So Our this Shadow guy dressed in black cannot be a double O. He can't be because he's used but he to wants to look gun. like a double O. He wants to look like a double mm. O. He had enough intelligence ahead of time to know they were wearing black. <laughs> yeah. Whoever this guy is, that's pretty good. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. So then we get the double O who was climbing the cliff looks worried. I mean, he sees the man at the top. And he's attached something to the rope Yes. And with a carabiner. And this note slides down, and our second double O sees it, reads it, peers up as the man on the top cuts his rope with a knife while our double O yells, No! Ah! As he falls to his death. Yeah, now there's one brief second there, actually. Now, we don't actually see... They, we don't see him reading the note and turn and we don't see the note, but there is one brief second. If you freeze frame it where you can read the note on the carabiner and as it slid down the rope and it does say smeared spionum, which we will see is an, is very important later in the movie. Of course, when Saunders is killed. So there is that. As much as I've gone frame by frame for these things, I can't believe I missed that. Yeah. I wanted to see (laughs) if you could possibly see it. If it's going full speed, there's no way you could see it. But if you freeze frame it, you could actually see it for probably a frame or two. I mean, it's it's not much. But I'm going to have there. to go back yeah. and check that out. Yeah, mm. yeah. So that's pretty cool. Then, from there, the Bond music plays as we see the real third double O, and it is Bond. Yay! Timothy Dalton <laughs> is on our screen. Timothy Dalton is on the screen. Now, Paul Weston, stunt supervisor on the film, said Dalton showed great courage to be hanging off the side of a mountain with a, a thirteen hundred foot drop, Oof. yeah, yeah, I would, yeah, I, I give him credit. It's it's amazing. Mm. Other than Roger, how many of these guys wanted to do their stunts? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. Roger didn't so. even like running. <laughs> I don't either. I'm with him on that. So Bond sees his fellow double O falling. Uh, he discovers the rubber's been cut and gets down to his fallen double O. And as he begins to examine the body, we hear a screech and a thump, and we are all startled. This was a great addition to the tension already mounting. It turns out to be a monkey, yeah. and there are two to three hundred of them in Gibraltar yep. called Barbary macaques. Yeah. It's well done, a startling effect that is real and believable, and I've watched it dozens of times, and it makes me jump every time. Yeah, it made me jump too, <laughs> and uh, it's it's a great effect because you don't know what's going on, and bam, and it's just monkey. Well, and I love the, the fact that you knew they were macaques. They look like monkeys to me. <laughs> <laughs> Not every monkey's a monkey. <laughs> well, I guess sometimes they're <laughs> Some macaques. of them are macaques. <laughs> Barbary macaques, too, she said. That's good. Yes. All right. Meanwhile, our shadowy figure shoots another defender and steals his Land Rover. Land Rover. There's a nice product placement there. All yes, right. there's definitely product placement here. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So Bond sees the Land Rover racing away below. He starts in pursuit, running parallel to the Land Rover. Now, the Land Rover, you know, is driving. Bond is yeah, running. But it's not a huge highway he's driving on. No, but Bond is running. Okay. Bond sees another defender who shoots Bond with a paintball, and Bond pushes him out of the way because now Bond's thinking, 
this is no longer a paintball exercise. Yeah. There's Something's no more going training on exercise. here because yeah. he's Bond. Kind of obvious. <laughs> so still, he's running after the Land Rover. So from the ed- edge of the road, he's running on above, and it's a real road. And we've seen pictures taken by colleagues of ours on that same road. So it's there in real life. He leaps onto the top of the Land Rover. Yeah. Now let's talk about this road for a second, Dan, because it's not very long. Yeah. And they use the same trick they did in the Octopussy (laughs) pre-title sequence with the Acrostar microjet. So in Octopussy, that jet takes off and lands almost in the same spot of the highway. It's exact. You know, it's the same road. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. took Oxford it from directly. different. Sh- yeah. They took it from you know, you know, one going north to south and the other one going south to north or east to w- whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, took yeah. them going opposite ways so that the backgrounds look different. <laughs> yeah. Right here in the living daylights, they do a very very similar thing. That road, that road that this Land Rover is on is really short, and so they end up filming it from all sides, making it look like they're covering a much greater distance than they are. But it's the same technique. Ah, okay. And so they're driving on this narrow road. There's cliffs on the left and a chasm to the right. The guy inside the vehicle tries to swerve, not to knock Bond off. Mm-hmm. And he finally gets the idea. Just shoot him. Hey, <laughs> so what an idea. <laughs> what an idea. <laughs> so he points the pistol with the suppressor and he fires it up through the roof. And it's Fortunately, a canvas roof. It's a canvas roof. That's true. It is yeah. a canvas roof. So you see... Now, so he should see the impression of Bond and he misses him. Right? So we see the first hole penetrate the roof between Bond's spread out legs about a foot down from his crotch. Yeah. And the second rips a hole through the roof about six inches from his crotch. And that's when Bond decides he better move. <laughs> and we two more shots. And yeah. You can't help watching this without remembering Goldfinger's laser cutting up the table because yeah. Bond's legs are spread out and it's cutting towards his crotch like these bullets yeah, are moving yeah. towards his crotch. Yeah, Is this a subtle or a not so subtle callback to Goldfinger here? I think that's a great homage to Goldfinger because it's the same concept. Legs spread, something's coming up at your crotch. <laughs> yeah, you, Bond couldn't move in Goldfinger, but here, Timothy Dalton as Bond thinks, I got to get, I got to move. I got to do something here. I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> right. All right. So a defender guard at the gate sees this approaching vehicle and he tries to stop it and fires two paintballs at the windscreen. Well, <laughs> the driver just hits the defender with the vehicle because he's not playing this game. <laughs> well, he probably couldn't see him very well either. Yeah. All right. Now the defender comes out of the shack, realizing this is not part of the exercise, this other defender, and he fires an automatic weapon with live ammunition at the rear of the vehicle. And we see some hits. So there's a guy who actually can shoot and hit something. That's pretty good. <laughs> <What a concept>. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Bond is holding on for dear life. And the guy driving the vehicle is giving up trying to shoot Bond. <laughs> I don't know why. And we hear a few pops and see well, he's a got, shot. He's got to pay attention. He's not on a very big road here. No, he's not. We see a shot from inside of the vehicle looking backward, and there's a fire now in the rear of the vehicle. Remember, the guy just shot some real live ammunition and it hits the back of the, of the vehicle. Well, they hit something. And so whatever <laughs> that guard hit with the live ammo is now on fire. And we got yeah, Bond on the yeah. roof. Of course he's going to die. It's a pre-title <laughs> sequence. I, I think he's in trouble. I I don't know. I, I, I just. <sighs> well, seeing Bond's feet dangling at the rear, we also see the crates in the rear that are labelled ammunition clips mm-hmm. and another detonator, so that's not good. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Then ammunition Bond's... clips and detonators, not <laughs> and good fire. to be hit by bullets. <laughs> yeah. And so fire. Bond takes out a knife and cuts through the canvas roof and starts to climb in as the driver is fighting Bond with one hand while trying to drive on this road. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, this would have been a good time for the driver to have had his pistol in his hand. <laughs> Bam! You're done. You're dead. Just Not shoot a paintball. Him. <laughs> Just shoot him. Just shoot him. <laughs> but we know he shot the first guard, and then he shot the guard to get the Land Rover, and then he fired four shots up at Bond on the roof. So maybe it was time to reload. Ah. But no time for that. <laughs> that could be, because he's driving, like you said, on this narrow road, like Tom said. That's true. Uh, so and, hey, that's a good point. Maybe he's out of ammo. All right. Yeah, I didn't recognize the gun. I mean, it looked yeah, like a good. magazine loaded automatic. So you think it would have more than six shots. Yeah. Unless it's like yeah. Dent Smith and Wesson and Dr. No. Yeah. And he's already <laughs> had his six. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. But no, the hand Dr. fight. Dr. No? Cont- 
The hand fight continues as the Land Rover, of course, crashes into a market and a few cafe tables, as we've seen in so many other Bond movies. Mm. And let's not forget, there's a fire in the back. <laughs> and we know what's in those crates. So this yeah. is trouble. <laughs> By the way, one of them falls off, and in case we need a reminder of what might be in the crates, <laughs> if we miss the label, it hits the pavement and explodes. Boom, there you go. <laughs> Not a lot of subtlety there. <laughs> yeah, just to reiterate it. <laughs> just how stupid are we in the audience? Okay, all right, now we get it. This stuff could explode. All right. So Bond, in the vehicle now, he's wrestling with this guy for control of the wheel, and they're approaching a tourist location as the tourists dash out of the way, you know, panicking for their lives. Finally, the vehicle crashes dramatically over the edge and is plunging into the sea below. All right, between the explosives aboard on fire and the plunge, Bond will be dead. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. You can't get out of both of these things happening at the same time. So there you go. Bond is dead. But wait, this is no time to die. Uh, oh, no, I mean, this is not no time to die. <laughs> <laughs> right. So he might survive. Good point. <laughs> Bond will escape. He pulls his chute and is wafted out of the rear of the Land Rover. Cool. And in the nick of time, because the Land Rover, yeah, it explodes. You know, the ammo's there. It's on fire. Come on. Boom. Done. But there Bond's will out. go. Now, this was an interesting stunt. And again, on that Inside the Living Daylights extra that I mentioned earlier, John Richardson from the special effects talks about how they were going to first shoot this Land Rover off the cliff thing mm. by dropping the Land Rover off a helicopter with someone on it in the Mojave Desert. <laughs> they had a parachute attached to the Land Rover the first time it worked, but the second time the chute didn't get open. And as Richardson said, Instead of being about six feet high, I think it was reduced to about four inches. <laughs> and it just flattened completely when it hit the ground. And they have a shot of it. You can actually see this thing flattened on the ground. Okay, that's so, not good. <laughs> so they went with plan B and went a different way and actually did have it go off of a cliff. Yeah. I like that they did it. I like that Bond pulled his chute. But I'm thinking they parachuted onto Gibraltar. And he still has another chute on his back? That's what I was thinking instantly. Well... Of course, the other two double O's we saw still had a pack on their back. So, and they released their main shoots and on, on the ground after landing. So, okay, I'm going to go with this that they have another pack on their back and it has another shoot in it. Yeah, so, a secondary shoot. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I guess, under the other one apparently, or yeah. wherever. Who knows? But it, I think okay. He, he, hey, he, if I if I'm going to parachute, I better have two shoots on. <laughs> I wouldn't be parachuting. I'd watch you parachute. <laughs> I wouldn't do it, but if I was, I'd demand two two shoots and somebody holding on to me. Okay. All right, <laughs> so, there, two so here we, we have a nice aerial shot. It shows us Bond's feet dangling beneath the chute as he descends, and between his feet down below in the water is a gorgeous white yacht. But Bond's chute, having been hit by debris from the exploding Land Rover, we remember it exploded. That's how close it was because it's kind of smoking. <laughs> is shoot, which is generally not good if you're trying to land with a parachute. So he better land fast or he could plummet to his death. <laughs> All right, we cut to a bikini-clad woman on the yacht talking on a phone. Now we're in a Bond movie. Yeah, I'm really thinking. <laughs> okay. It's all so boring here, Margo. There's nothing but playboys and tennis pros. If only I could find a real man. And then, <laughs> out of nowhere, boom, in drops Bond. <laughs> yeah. <Only> cliche. <laughs> <laughs> Bond's first lines in the entire pre-title sequence. I need to use your phone. He grabs it and says to the person on the other end, she'll call you back. And then he hangs up and starts dialing. That's pretty cool. Now he's like, hey, yeah. this is Bond for the first time. He asks, who are you? To which he replies, Bond, James Bond. Ah, now we see it's really Bond. Timothy Dalton is Bond. Very cool guy. This line was delivered a little differently than most. It was kind of hurried. Like, hey, I gotta, I gotta make this call. You know, <laughs> I don't have a lot of time. You know, 
This scene makes me laugh because Bond could never just land on a fishing trawler with old bearded fishermen, could he? <laughs> he had to land on a yacht with a scantily clad female. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing. She apparently is the only one on the yacht. I don't know who's piloting the yacht or where the crew is, but... Yeah, she's the only one we see in these Uh, Daniel Craig Bond movies. I would expect this, right? Because that was, you know, sex was part of it then. Yeah. Now, 15 years after this, in the Bourne Identity, Jason Bourne is pulled onto a fishing trawler with bearded old, (laughs) bearded old (laughs) fishermen. And the experience is not quite as titillating. <laughs> hey. you know, I have never, I've, can I just say, I have never seen the Born, Born Identity film, so I had no idea about that. Yes. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that, it, it does happen. It's it happens exactly oh, like Tom said. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, back to Bond here. He's on the phone, and he says, Exercise control 007 here. I'll report in an hour. Won't you join me? Better make that two. <laughs> All right. Okay. We we have Bond back. A new one, but he's the same old Bond. Better make that two. It reminds us, of course, of Sean Connery and Dr. No telling Sylvia Trent he has to leave immediately until she starts to hug and kiss him. Mm-hmm. And then he says, almost immediately. <laughs> and I, I love this trope. I mean, they use it throughout the series. Too. And it's one of those things that anchors us to, yes, this is Bond. Yeah. It's a new guy playing the role, but it is Bond. Yeah. I, I love it, too. Yeah. Great stuff. Yeah. And then again, in From Russia to Love, when he's on the picnic with Sylvia Trench, yeah. yes, she's in two movies in a row yes. as the same character, and mm-hmm. Eunice Gason played her. Um, Money Penny interrupts the picnic and says that M's been looking for him, and Bond says he's reviewing, reviewing an old case. <laughs> 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 Sylvia Trench is getting frustrated and Eva mentions the last time you went off to Jamaica. I love the time with Dr. No and her character there. And Bond slapping Sylvia's hand away from him saying, I'll be there in an hour. And Moneypenny says, hey, your old case sounds interesting, James. <laughs> and Bond replies, mm, better make that an hour and a half. Oh, I love that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Same oh, the new Bond is asking for two hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's well, it's <laughs> <A little true. laughs> And back in the living daylights here, we're headed right into the title sequence after Dalton's line here of yeah, better make yeah, that too. That too. All right. It's an okay title sequence. Slow moving, I think. Tattooed naked women with tattoos strategically placed. <laughs> Very. Uh, guns shooting and <laughs> naked women tumbling, which happens occasionally. Aha's title track, The Living Daylights, is good. The Norway based group. Did not get along very well with John Barry, it was reported. And Barry didn't see eye to eye with this young group. And songfacts.com said that Barry compared working with AHA to, quote, playing ping pong with four balls. (laughs) 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 Unquote. Okay, that's a pretty good visual. (laughs) That defines chaos to me. (laughs) Right. So, is this another pre title? That has nothing to do with the plot of the movie or mission of the movie? Well, I mean, there is a loose connection, and that's the note that we had mentioned earlier, that the shadowy figure slid down the rope. We later find out it says, Mirt Spionum, Death to Spies, and that message and theme will appear again. So this movie has some great actors in it, like Mariam Dabo, John Rhys Davies as Pushkin, Jodan Baker as Whitaker, Andreas Wisniewski as Necros, he was, he was fantastic. fantastic. He yeah. was fantastic. Yeah. And uh, Yarun Krabe as Koskov. What a great cast. Well, hey guys, you know me, and I'm going to be controversial and say I actually prefer License to Kill out of the okay. two Dalton films. I find the villains in this film incredibly lackluster, and I'm not a fan of Bond Girl Kara. Okay. That being said, I absolutely do love John Reese davis as Pushkin, and I wished he had returned in another film because he was such a great character. Yeah, he Vicky, was I'm, terrific. I'm mm. going to agree with you about the two Dalton movies as to which one is better, and I know a lot of people uh, say uh, that this one was better than License to Kill. Yeah. I don't find this one lackluster, but uh. Sanchez, for me, from License mm. to Kill, takes that movie over the top. Yep. I think he's one of the best yeah. all-time yeah. Bond villains. Yep. 
And that's not denig- not to denigrate this movie because I actually do like this one. And yeah. I love yeah. what Timothy Dalton does with the character in this movie. Yeah. We would not have had a Daniel Craig Bond mm. if Dalton didn't bring things back to reality here and ma- give us this dark Bond that we see here. Yeah. So now when we, when we do the whole movie, we're going to talk about the short story that Fleming wrote and how some of the stuff from the movie comes directly from this short story. Mm-hmm. But this pre-title sequence has nothing to do <laughs> with the Ian Fleming short story, The Living Daylights, though. <laughs> no, at all. Nothing at all. But I also agree. I love License to Kill. Robert Davi uh, may be my favorite Bond villain because the villains... Sometimes when they're real kind of believable villains, like he, he just was a drug lord. He wanted to control his little world of his drug lordship. Not, I want to build a new race. I want to build an underworld water <laughs> civilization. I mean, hey, hey, this is like, I'm a drug lord. Leave me alone. I'm making millions of dollars. Boom. I liked it. So I licensed to kill. I agree. I, but I do like the living daylights. And I think it was well done. And Dalton. Terrific. I wish he would have done more. Definitely. Okay, that's a good time to wrap it up. We've decoded the pre-title sequence to the living daylights. This has been Dan Silvestri. Tom Pizzotto. And Vicky Hodges. Of SpyMovieNavigator.com and our show, Cracking the Code of Spy Movies. Subscribe to our show right now through your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. And have a cracking good time. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, too. If you like our show, please tell your friends about us through your own social media posts. Thanks for listening. We appreciate it.